reminds us of stories we've heard from our mothers and grandmothers about how back in their day, the boss could say and do whatever he pleased to the women in the office, and even though they worked so hard, jumped over every hurdle to prove themselves, it was never enough. We thought all of that was ancient history, didn't we? And so many have worked for so many years to end this kind of violence and abuse and disrespect, but here we are in 2016, and we're hearing these exact same things every day on the campaign trail. We are drowning in it. If you want to hear the best case for Hillary Clinton, if you want to hear the very real stakes in this election, I would advise you to link up to Michelle's speech from earlier today in New Hampshire. She was pretty good. I mean, she... That's why you get married, to improve your gene pool. So your, your, your kids end up being superior to you. We were just talking. Willie asked how many points <laughs> do we think Barack Obama would be up if he were in this race? Um, 20, I think, is where we said it. Yeah, we said Well, it. We said Gene, you said it correctly. I, they the would, they would have put yeah. the mercy rule in effect. They would have said, to. Okay, kids, come on in. Yeah, come right. In. Come Game's on. Over. <laughs> exactly. Game's over. Let's go have some ice cream. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, let's listen, let's get gonna, some pizza. Yeah. It's all over. We're just going to leave the last three yeah. lines. Mm -hmm. and yeah. You guys exactly. vote now. Exactly. And, Caddy, um, I was trying to think about any historical precedent to having two of the greatest speakers, political speakers, uh, in America being from the same family. Yeah. Because oh, that's what we saw last night. By the end of President Obama's speech, you were left with no conclusion <laughs> other than the two most effective speakers in America. Do you have to go back to JFK and Jackie? Was Jackie a good public speaker? No, no she was a she good. Was not. She JFK was good. She was good. JFK and Bobby, though, you could do. JFK and Bobby, you could do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Bobby, Bobby, well, Bobby, it took Bobby a while. It took him a while, didn't he? He yeah. was not a natural. He was not. He, um, he really wasn't until, you know, extraordinary moments like his Indianapolis speech in the night. Yeah, well, no, that was the, and that South was African, best. 66, yeah. but he wasn't a natural. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Michelle Obama, what's so remarkable about Michelle Obama is mm -hmm. we hear time and time again she doesn't like politics. Yeah. And it is a good thing <laughs> for the rest of the Democratic Party that Michelle Obama does not like politics. Uh, right. Because they'd be like, okay, everybody, move down to the end of the bench. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. The first lady is going to be running for it. She, yeah, no, I mean, she, she, she is, is uh, just, because, just a, you know, and, she, and, and I mean, no. she did, she, I think, visibly was not that wild about this whole political thing at first. And, no. Um, but obviously she has warmed to it. Obviously she has learned to, I mean, she is just, a, that was, I think Bill Clinton called it the best speech of the campaign. He might be right. It was a great speech. She gave that great speech in Philly at the Democratic mm -hmm. Convention where she really yeah. made the case for Michelle Ob for Hillary Clinton in a way that none of Hillary Clinton's other surrogates have you know, managed you to. You know who she made the case for? She made the case for America. Mm -hmm. I remember yes, thinking, right. you know, we're cheering <laughs> Michelle Obama going, okay, wait, okay, wait, this is weird. <laughs> wait, wait, what, what's going on here? Yes. She, she spoke for Americans. But and, I'd argue last night's speech was more, was harder, a harder speech to give because it was such a personal, intimate subject that to give it without sounding um, mawkish or self-indulgent in any way, but to stand up for American women and, and women and girls and families everywhere in the way that she did. This is a tricky subject. This whole issue of sexual harassment and abuse is hard. It's hard to talk about. It's hard for men to talk about. It's hard for women to talk about. But she did it in a way that was articulate and thoughtful and emotional, but without being over the top. Well, and, the, and, and they brought everybody along. She didn't close she any doors right. to right. listeners along the way. And everyone would have listened to that. Said, That's her. how right. I feel. And the thing is, and uh, Willie, one of the things that drove me so crazy about a lot of Republican candidates this past year is they were so pre-programmed. Mm. You could tell they were reading from speeches that had been like churned through, mm -hmm. like the, gi the giant, you know, uh, political machines, the focus groups, poll tested lines. Michelle Obama tackled a difficult topic yesterday and made it work extraordinarily well because you could tell it was coming from her mm -hmm. heart 
and that there was nothing calculated about it. This wasn't to help Hillary Clinton. This wasn't to help her husband's legacy. This wasn't to promote herself. This was about her daughters, and this was about my daughter. It was about your daughter. It was about, uh, about daughters and mothers and women all across America. I think also the benefit any first lady has is that they're not in the day-to-day -day political fight. So whenever they make a speech, particularly one as important as this one, it has added gravity and impact. It doesn't feel like you're being hit over the head with politics. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she talked a little bit more. This was at an event in Manchester, New Hampshire yesterday. Let's listen. The fact is that in this election, we have a candidate for president of the United States who over the course of his lifetime and the course of this campaign has said things about women that are so shocking, so demeaning, that I, I simply will not repeat anything here today. And last week, we saw this candidate actually bragging about sexually assaulting women. And I can't believe that I'm saying that a candidate for president of the United States has bragged about sexually assaulting women. And I have to tell you that I, I can't stop thinking about this. It has shaken me to my core in a way that I couldn't have predicted. This is not something that we can ignore. It's not something we can just sweep under the rug as just another disturbing footnote in a sad election season. Because this was not just a lewd conversation. This wasn't just locker room banter. This was a powerful individual speaking freely and openly about sexually predatory behavior and actually bragging about kissing and groping women, using language so obscene that many of us were worried about our children hearing it when we turn on the TV. We will obviously keep talking about that.